So Angus, we're delighted to welcome you back to the Channels Forum once again. You've been a loyal supporter of this event. We used to meet personally, now we meet by video, and actually it's a year since um, we last met by video to talk about Dell's strategy and the Channels Forum. So we're delighted to welcome you back. Let's start by how things are going. How are you and how, how things have been in the last 12 months? Hey, Steve, great to see you. Great to uh, connect with all of our partners around the world. Um, I'm good. Thank you very much indeed. Keeping well, uh, keeping safe, uh, looking forward to getting back, uh, physically traveling again, have a few trips coming up, uh, particularly in Europe over the next few weeks. Um, but, you know, over the last 18 months, I've been using the technology to virtually get around the world. Um, I think earlier uh, this week I was in Russia. Uh, last week I was in France. Uh, next week I'm heading to uh, Australia. So uh, it's been great to uh, to whiz around the world. I guess on uh, Zoom Airlines. I, I guess, like everybody else, though, you're wondering. Business has been good. Results have been good. So how do we justify the time and money of going back to travelling? Have you given that some thought? Will travelling be less in the future, or or do you feel a real urge to go actually and shake hands and see people? Look, I, I think, uh, you know, I, I took leadership of our international markets uh, coming up almost on two years ago. Uh, so there's many places I definitely want to get out to physically. I think building new relationships, uh, connecting with our partners and customers. I think it's important you do that clearly face to face. But I think also I think we've shown that technology can be a super enabler. Uh, so I see a balance going forward. Yes, uh, I look forward to getting back to physically getting out and meeting customers and partners, but I'm definitely going to use the technology. Uh, I see probably 50-50 of what I would have done historically all physically traveling. I'll use the technology half the time and the other half obviously prioritizing key, key, key countries, key, key customers and partners to get out to. We've been speaking uh, obviously ourselves and yourself to a lot of channel partners and um, yeah, we're delighted to say that pretty much across the board that their results are strong, your results are strong. But I'm wondering, what, what have you been hearing from partners lately, particularly maybe as we start to go back to the office or in some countries we go back to the office? Yeah, look, I, I think over uh, the last 18 months or so, there, there's no doubt that technology has played a key role in uh, sustaining businesses. I think, uh, you know, we've seen a focus from customers on business outcomes, on key deliverables, objectives of their business. And then looking at how technology and the, and the IT strategy can underpin those business objectives. Uh, we've all seen the acceleration in things like the digital index. Uh, we've seen, obviously, IT budgets increasing. And I think as we also go forward now and get back into the office, we're seeing economic growth come back, uh, stimulated to a great extent by consumers now outspending. Um, and I see that you know through the rest of this year into next year, we see a, a lot of investment continuing in IT. And it's across the three kind of key areas that we, 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 we all you know, are in, in, focused around, the whole area around workforce, especially hybrid workforce for the future, both working in the office, working at home, working remotely. That flexibility is going to be key. And technology with a real end-to-end -end solution around that is critical. There's no doubt it's a multi-cloud world and um, vast, vast majority of customers and partners I speak with around the world. It's an enablement of public, private, on-premise in a hybrid multi-cloud world. The final area I definitely see is cyber and cyber security. That has moved up the scale of importance uh, as that threat plane has expanded with everyone working remotely, working from home, uh, uh, cyber attacks have quadrupled. And the need to look at that in an end-to-end -end view, making sure in particular that key critical data is kept, you know, whether it's in a cyber vault, locked away and available for recovery when required. So maybe the key three elements, and I think they'll remain the key focus for our customers and partners as we go into next year. Obviously, the client business has been phenomenal for yourselves and everyone else involved in the industry. We've been able to sell as many PCs as we could build. But let me come back to the, the data center and the multi-cloud question. Clearly, the public cloud has also done very, very well during the pandemic. Phenomenal growth rates and, and big businesses now, so really adding multiple billions of dollars a quarter. Uh, we are a little nervous that the data center, the private cloud, won't recover in the way that some people hope it will, simply because workloads have permanently shifted to per the public cloud. I wonder where you, you sit on that and how optimistic we can be for the 
the private on-premise business? Uh, Steve, I'm obviously seeing growth, I think, across all those aspects that you, you referenced. We're also seeing tremendous growth at the edge. I think 50% of all the new technology to be deployed by 2023 is going to be at the edge as well, too. Uh, with elements like 5G, I think it'll accelerate and enable that as well. So, yes, there's growth in public. There's also growth in private cloud, on-premise. There's growth across the board. For us as a company, with our partners, our focus is on how do you enable that? How do you put the right workloads mm -hmm. in public? Cloud and private and prem. How do you accelerate the access to the edge, the the data, the insights, the enablement and acceleration for the business? Uh, I think companies are, are are accelerating towards new digital products, services, e-commerce enablement, um, and I think that's giving a broad investment across the board. But the focus has to be on enablement of a multi-cloud uh, environment from an infrastructure and data center perspective. And obviously, one of the big things you've done over the, the last year or so is launch Apex. Do you want to talk a little bit about the adoption of that? And does it vary by region, by country? How's it been going? Yeah, Apex for us is, is, is everything as a service model. It's, it's a multi-year journey for us as a company. Our partners are absolutely central to that. They've been on every step of the, the journey to date and forward, whether it's in a referral model, whether it's in a host or colo uh, solution, or whether it's in a resale model. And um, so for us, that's what we're hearing from our customers, the ability to be flexible, a consumption, an on-demand as a service type model. Um, and we'll continue to, to build out those capabilities, roll them uh, across the world uh, over the coming uh, uh, couple of years. It also uh, is very key from a sustainability point of view, and that's a key element we hear from our customers and partners. And I think that will be a big uh, focus for everybody in business over the next couple of years. Um, and, and Apex allows for you know, technology to be available, to be consumed on an on-demand basis, and clearly supports all of the elements our customers are focused on around sustainability as well. So let's go into a bit more detail on the sustainability question. Are you talking about asset management, bringing products back? Is, is that is that's that's the play well, sustainability across the board i mean if you, if you take a look at one of the big elements of economic growth forward of the next couple of years it's around stimulus and investment mm -hmm. if you take the eu for example they're putting almost 40 percent of that budget investment into a green deal green economy and as i travel around the world two factors i see in every one of those stimulus and recovery budgets is investment in technology and digital and investment in uh, sustainability in a green economy. Uh, so from that, and both play well together, by the way, I think digital is a significant enabler to it as well. So for us as a company, um, I, I think everyone here, our partners will be familiar with our moonshot goals for 2030. We report out on an annual basis. It's across the board and, and dialogues with customers is very focused around this. They're looking for technology partners that can give them technology and solutions that have increased energy efficiency, mm -hmm. uh, the packaging is recycled, there's a circular economy, a take back program, that the materials used in the hardware are coming from recycled or reused materials. And we have very clear goals and objectives in relation to that. I spoke a couple of weeks ago at the uh, uh, climate summit taking place in New York and the dialogue and discussion is very focused around the delivery of products and solutions and capabilities that can underpin the goals that we have from a climate point of view. You obviously live in Ireland, it's a green country. I have to ask you and go off topic. What is that behind you? It looks like a lighthouse. It's always a great uh, to topic piece. Yeah, so um, why do I have a lighthouse uh, behind me? Um, you know, I think it's important to know where you come from. And my background is in uh, a family of lighthouse keepers. My uh, grandfather was a lighthouse keeper. My two uncles and uh, my mother was born uh, in a lighthouse called Ballycotton on the south coast of Ireland. So we've always had a great interest in it. And every time I head towards the coast, I got to go see where's the nearest lighthouse and visit it. So, um, yeah, that's that's the reason for the lighthouse. That's my background. That's that's quite a unique personal story. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. So we don't want to make these interviews too long, but I need to ask you a couple of questions now about the future. So. Uh, we are seeing some countries, particularly in Europe, come back to, to the office. What, do you, you know, what are you looking for over the next six to 12 months? Uh, where are you very optimistic for? I, I'm very positive and very optimistic overall. We, we already spoke about a number of the areas that I think are going to underpin strong economic growth, strong investment. Uh, all the indications are 
that IT is going to be central to that uh, growth. It's going to be central to the business strategies and outcomes uh, for our customers. So, you know, technology, I guess, will be the fuel of that continuation of, of, of economic expansion. I think for our partners, continuing to focus around virtual, uh, vertical specialization, uh, continue to look at the ex areas of expertise. Uh, we're clearly working with our partners on bringing solutions in those areas around workforce transformation, the whole multi-cloud modernization around infrastructure and cyber and the delivery of cyber uh, security and solutions in those areas as well too. So I'm, I'm very positive. Uh, if we look just back over the last six months, uh, we've seen 29% growth in our partner and channel business around the world. Uh, literally in the last uh, first half, we've seen 15% increase in our deal registrations with our partners. Uh, I, I think we'll continue to see an acceleration of that growth and development as we go into next year. Focus around those key areas of, of technology uh, and transformation we spoke about. There are a couple of storm clouds around. Um, the rise of inflation, some economic turbulence, particularly in China, which may spread, uh, but also the, the supply chain difficulties of many industries, including our own. I wonder how you feel their impact to you. Is the, is the supply products easing? Is it getting better? or? Are we going to continue to be constrained? Like every industry, I think when you have high levels of demand, it takes time for supply to catch up. I think one of the differentiations for us in Dell Technology with our partners like Intel and many others is that I think we have weathered that storm better than most. Our global set of capabilities and multiple uh, uh, ways in which we can get our product to market um, and also the ability to flex between locations operationally and manufacturing wise as well. So yes, it's been challenging. And um, what's been most important with our partners is understanding those customer needs and requirements, making sure we've got a good view of them forward as well too, planning to them. And one thing we have been absolutely focused around is commitments to our partners, commitments to our customers, that we set those out clearly and we lay them out and, and, and make sure we achieve them or do better than those, those commitments. And I think we've lived up well to that objective over the last, I guess, 18 months plus that we've seen of challenge. Um, I, I think that you know, we'll continue to see supply and challenges, um, but I, I, I do believe as we get into next year and maybe early into next year, we should see continued improvements. We're certainly seeing improvements in some of our lead times as well too. I think I read the article, I think in Forbes, which about Michael Dell and the purchase of EMC. I thought, I thought it was an excellent article, which captured the transformation that you guys have been on, on over the you know, since the purchase of EMC. And I thought it was excellent. You've, you've done a phenomenal job as a business, but also in terms of the partner community. Now, you know, neck and neck is the largest supplier of products to the channel of any company alongside Cisco and Apple. And, um, you know, I want to congratulate you from that. It, it wasn't obvious 10 years ago that Dell could be in the position it is today. Look, it, we're, we're there because of our partners. And uh, you and I have spoken on many occasions at, at Canalis over the years. And I think I've always highlighted the importance of that relationship of the long-term journey that we're on. Yeah. And, and the good news is that I see a, a bright opportunity ahead, you know, at least over the next couple of years, as we just talked about, our partners around the world are going to be central and key to that. We'll keep investing in tools and capabilities. We'll keep innovating around the technology and solutions, and we'll continue to build our business on our partners across all elements, distribution, resale, value alliances. We'll absolutely continue to grow and develop our business together. And to all you partners out there who haven't yet seen the light and had the opportunity, you know, turn to your left, turn to your right, chat to the partners, hear, hear about how they're working with us, and look forward to the opportunity to work with even more partners in the year ahead. And for many partners, you're now their number one supplier. There are a few who don't sell Dell, but many you are the number one. So it's been a, a, real, a real transformation. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. So with that, I'd like to wrap up this interview. Thank you very much, Angus. I hope that we can see each other in person around the world next year. Fingers crossed for that. And thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Steve. Look forward to it. Have a fabulous conference. Thank you. Wow, what a year it has been. 18 months. Every business had to adapt and transform. The do from anywhere world we're living in today, 
IT is no longer a department, it is the business. It has never been more imperative. Technology means nothing without the human connection behind it. While technology is the enabler, our partners are the true transformers. You offer unique capabilities and services. You help us go faster. You help us innovate. And you deliver infrastructure from the data center to the edge, to organization of all sizes, all industries, all around the world. The digital future has arrived and with it, the need for even stronger partnerships like you. The way we thrive is by working with all of you. The digital world is full of promises and opportunity, emerging technologies, transforming businesses, improving education, even saving lives, but it also brings its challenges. The data overload that businesses are gathering data faster than they can analyze and they can even imagine. Cybersecurity, twice as many data records compromised since the start of 2020 than the previous 15 years combined. Wow. Diego, as the leader of our international channel sales and as an awesome partner of mine, how are you seeing partners stay ahead of this massive shift that we're seeing in delivering technology for good? Thank you, Rola, and hello, everyone. Super excited to be here with you. So before we go, I want to start talking a little bit about the trends we see in the marketplace. Let's start by the first trend we see. Hybrid business models accelerated by as a service. What we see is that customers are more and more focused on outcomes, and as a service and the hybrid cloud and enables them to be more agile, scale, and reduce complexity. Forrester Research did a study where in the next three years, they expect 57% of the customers to move to a data as a service model. Whether it's 57, 50, or 60, time will tell, but definitely is a move that came to stay. Partners' own IP solutions increase the resale of services, which helps them have a recovery model, which at the end generates them a stable inflow of cash. Trend number two, the industry specialization and marketplace growth. What we see is more and more partners specializing either on an industry or on a workload. And that comes together with far more value to the customers and to the partners because they can resell more than once the solutions they do. It can be either retail, it can be health screening, manufacturing, and so on and so forth, or it can be a workload specific one, like the cameras that measure the temperature when you get into the office, when you get into the school, when you get into the hospital, the same workload solution that is used over and over by, by many, many times by the partners with the customers, which then gets me to the marketplace. The marketplace is the vehicle they use to multiply the customers using those solutions. Partners offering their own marketplaces for customers to serve from, public clouds like Amazon Web Services, Azure, and so on and so forth, or even the marketplaces from the distributors. Diego, I love the trends that you're talking about and the focus that you've got with the team because these types of solutions and investments that we're making and we're seeing that are a great complement to the work our team is doing and continue to focus on across the globe. Absolutely, Rola, you're spot on. Now, the third trend is the interconnected partner ecosystem. Gone are the days where we could classify a partner by a single category. Today, given the complexity our customers have, partners have to take more than one role. And that brings together more than one partner to work together to deliver results. That includes also the, the value of influencing customers even though a certain partner does not transact. The clearest example is ISVs. ISV many times suggest technology. They don't resell the technology. They resell their own IP. So when you look at, at this partner ecosystem and interaction and interoperativity becomes critical and is one of the biggest trends we see forward. When you look at it, that is why you see big distributors or big partners building specific business units depending on what road to market they're talking about 
and also blurrier lines when you talk about MSPs also doing resales or traditional uh, solution providers doing hosting. So at the end of the day, what you see is that the market has these three big trends and the three of them are coming our way. So Rola, how can we help the partners collaborate and take advantage of this opportunity? You're absolutely right, Diego. We have an incredible opportunity as technology trends in our multi-year strategy is aligned in its awesome. But none of these trends are possible without our trusted partnerships. We are committed to our partners. We're committed to driving mutual success and committed to being the number one partner in their eyes in the best of the best, absolutely. A key component of our commitment is maintaining a high say-do ratio. Here are our three strategic imperative that our commitment to our partners. Number one, how do we continue to enhance the end-to-end -end partner experience? Because it's always about the partner experience. How do we make it easier to do business with us? How do we raise the bar with automated tools and processes? How do we continue to build the partner program of the, of the future? Continue to build upon our partner predictability. And two, how do we accelerate partner growth with best-in-class emerging technology? And Diego, I know you are the best at giving that answer to all of our partners. Well, Rola, growth. Growth is the name of the game, and we all know it. When we look at what we can provide, we can provide the best-in-class technology from Dell Technologies. Our data center solutions are a core element of our offering, where we've been growing in acquisition, and we want to continue growing in cross-sell with Intel Power Infrastructure Solutions. Our storage portfolio, which is second to none, which can provide solutions from the high end to the entry level for data protection and cybersecurity, provide our partners the tools needed to provide high value to our customers. Customers ask us to have trusted, secure data environments where they can operate. With their technology, cyber resiliency solutions, we can provide that. Add to that the fact that with VMware, we can provide multi-cloud access so that partners and customers can interact with different cloud providers, hybrid or on-prem, securely, simple, and an agile IT solution. So, on top of the technology itself, let's talk about Apex journey. We started the journey some time ago, you all heard the announcements, and the intention and the objective is to deliver cloud and infrastructure as a service solutions to simplify how customers consume and manage technology. We, they wanna focus on business outcomes. We, together with you, will take care of the rest. So if I stop there for a second and think about what we spoke, we talked about the trends in the market, we talked about Dell technology, and we talked about the Apex journey. When you bring it all together, the opportunity for the partners is massive. Whether it is helping the customers transition into as a service, whether it is building joint solutions for Edge, whether it is vertical or horizontal or workload solutions, the opportunity for all of us working together is enormous, it will continue this way, and we have everything we need to succeed in this digital era together. And Diego, when we talk about three, which is I love, which is activate partnership to make an impact in drive progress on Dell Technologies 2030 moonshot goals. I love this one. We are a tech optimist because every day we see how technology can power human progress. And how do we advance sustainability by 2030? For every product a customer buys, we will reuse or recycle an equivalent product. How awesome is that? 100% of our packaging will be made from recycled or renewable material. More than half of our product content will be made from recycled and renewable materials. My favorite is cultivate inclusion. We believe technology should be an equalizer, not another source of division. We are building an inclusive future for all. By 2030, 
50% of our global workforce and 40% of our global people leaders will be those who identify as women. How do we continue to transform lives? Our technology plays a huge critical role in helping teachers adapt to online learning. Standing up remote hospitals around the world in matters of hours. By 2030, we will advance health, education, and economic opportunity initiatives to deliver results for 1 billion people. All while upholding ethics and privacy, we will fully automate our data control processes making it easier for our customers to control their personal data. Our impact grows exponentially when we work with partners who are committed to the same goals and values like ours. This year, we modified our MDF spend guidance to allow you to give back to the community. Nonprofit activities be carried out in your local communities. That's impact. We've also doubling down on our Women Partner Network initiative to make a larger impact globally. This is all about how we will thrive together, make a collective impact for years and years to come. So partners, our commitment to you is to stay agile for you and for your customers, making sure we continue innovating in a constant change market like the one we are. We're focused on you and on your customers to bring more and more innov innovation in this journey we are together. We will take all the benefits of the digital age. We will do it together. We will continue to innovate and develop new technology for you to win and move forward together. Thank you, Diego. We have gone through so much transformation in the last 18 months. Personal transformation, digital transformation, but guess what? No matter what comes our way in this digital age, rest assured, Dell Technology will be by your side every step of the way. And we will always help you be ready for it no matter what, because together we stop at nothing. Thank you.